So I am just going to rip the Band-Aid off. I am here to tell all of you, my wonderful co-hosts and the viewers at home, that this is going to be my last season here at The View. Spouting off at her in a way that I found not only um, unbecoming and, and ridiculous, but to do it in a foreign country in that kind of form particularly bizarre. It's the press's job to speak truth to power. And just because Biden has gotten a pass so far, which he has and continues to do, it is in no one's best interest to treat him like it's state TV. The thing that I never saw Trump do is apologize to anybody. And I will take it when you, you know, because sometimes I'm rude respect, to somebody. We're all like respect, that. I don't I just care. Want to, let me just president. finish what I'm saying. Well, with all due respect, I, I, I don't I'm care just, if he's apologizing. He just embarrassed himself. I don't care that you don't like care. Trump. Just hear what well, I'm saying. I don't saying. care that okay, you don't care. We're going we'll go, so to go. Well, then good, Megan. Then you can be how you always are. We'll be you right back. You can be how you always are. The media doesn't want the squad to look bad. They just want Marjorie Taylor to look bad. Anti-Semitism is a huge problem everywhere in this country. When you talk about Holocaust survivors, yes, it is. my producer yes. who produces me yes, every day's grandparents We're going to break, and, and when we come back, you can continue Why talking, but now off? we're going to break, so we'll be right back. I'm cutting you off because we have to go, Megan. Why do you think I'm cutting you off? I just wish we could bring that same energy towards hate crimes directed towards Jewish people, toward, as we do with every other hey, minority, we which we should. We bring, I'm saying we, we bring in the hate, media. we bring, I resent that. We just do. And I when you, that and remark. when you say, which well, one? I resent a lot of things, so we're even. Don't tell me what I'm supposed to be saying, Megan, okay? You do I'm your not thing, we you do what ours. You're supposed to say. I know, I'm well aware we do separate things on the show, Joy, okay? And I know you've been here 25 years, I've been here four. That's right. That's right. You should have some respect for that. No, but a blue moon. See, when, when Democrats come on here and wax poetic about extremism, I'm not saying Trump isn't doing it, but you're calling everybody that was in that North Carol Carolina rally a Nazi. I understand from my standpoint, it seems like the left is pretty extreme in that end as well. No, I'm, I'm not calling everyone who, who was you in You compared that rally. his rally to Nuremberg and his re well, reporters to Nazis. He's just asking one. for women uh, of color we, to, to, we, to go back to, to their own that. country and then connect it with everything else Jews. that he's doing, the press as the enemy of the people. And you have to understand how it looks for people in the middle, the, thinking that maybe I don't agree with everything the left is saying, so automatically you're Nazi. Aren't these the same people who won't take the vaccine, which would actually uh, lead to herd immunity? Are they waiting for some divine intervention? Because if they are, I say unto them, we have it. It's called a vaccine. The messaging towards evangelicals and Republicans is, you dumb hillbillies, stay the hell away from me. And I don't think there's any way that's going to convince anyone of anything if that's the messaging coming out of the White House. I have no problem with vaccines, but the messaging is psychotic. A lot of this feels like it's more about control than science. If the vaccine is 94% effective, which, which we are told by science and the CDC and all smart people that come on the show it is. If the vaccine works, why do we still have to wear masks outdoors? The Democrats would be wanting Republicans to come together with them to go forward. And instead, we're hearing a lot of language from people like Katie Couric. The Republicans like me need to be, quote, deprogrammed, that we're brainwashed, that 74 million Americans are basically irredeemable people that, that we don't need to communicate towards and we don't need to in any way have anything to do with. And I think it's horribly dangerous for the country. And I also think it's horribly dangerous for Democrats. If you don't care about unity, you should care about the politics of this. And if a President Biden and Democrats want to have a big tent party and include some of these people, great. And if we're all just deplorable and need to be deprogrammed, as Katie Couric said, then honestly, they can go to hell because I don't need to be deprogrammed. 25% of Americans are comfortable with a socialist becoming president. How many? So 25%, that's it. And well, like they, I said, when they realize what that means, they'll get uh, please, uh, People are smart. Okay, so, so I'm just saying, do you know what's helping Pete boot it? So am I. So am I. But there's a difference okay, between disagree. socialist and democratic. You disagree socialist. that I'm smart? No, I disagree with the idea right. that socialism is a bad thing in a, the way they're describing well, it. I mean, it's just, I'm just trying to explain to you the other side and why he's a great candidate and why democratic socialists could be leading you towards the path towards Trump getting reelected. But instead, I'm told that I don't understand what democratic socialism is. I assure you, Joy, I do. I'm telling you, it is how we got Trump and it's how you're going to reelect him. And when he is reelected, which at this point, I believe he is going to be, I hope at some point oh my you God. won't 
listen to the warning Oh my God, shots. I have to make a novena. I have given all of you. Okay, well, look, I'm, I'm, I'm used to the audience booing me. There's like a, fine. There's like a I am the token conservative in media. The mainstream media only feels like there needs to be one on a show like this. That, that one person out of five represented means that there's enough conservative media coverage. What I have found interesting working in what I consider liberal media is not the stories that we talk about, but the stories that we don't talk about. There's been a lot of stories like, for example, we've never once talked about Hunter Biden as a hot topic on this show, whereas Ivanka Trump or Donald Trump Jr. cough in the wrong direction, and it probably would have taken up the first two blocks. My husband and I, uh, you know, exist in our whole world is conservative media. He founded and runs one of the most influential and highly trafficked conservative websites on the internet. And the reason why these outlets like this need to exist is because everything else is liberal everywhere else. There, there's a reason why Fox is killing it in the ratings and laps everyone else. And you think Jim Acosta isn't an activist? I don't have any trust in people on CNN anymore. So I, I just, I take. Uh, such umbrage at, at, at this entire concept that liberal media, which runs all of media, all of tech, all of entertainment, all of music, all of culture, all of politics, all three branches of government, I'm supposed to feel bad because there's two things from Fox News that have like have been inaccurate. I mean, let's go down the list every day of the things that are inaccurate on CNN and MSNBC, and then we can talk about fairness in the media.